Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Uh, we will be going through the papers this morning with Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN News. Good morning, Mr. Wandu. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's get to with the Nigerian Tribune this morning and see what uh, papers we can, uh, what stories rather we can share with uh, you this morning. It's going to be on your screen in just a few seconds. The big one there, you can see there says, Our defecting governors lack courage. And that's from the PDP. COVID-19, federal government bans travelers from South Africa to receive more vaccines from India. Um, also this morning, Chirima police await pathologist report over Super TV boss. Agony as Kaduna Abuja train breaks down. And hunger, CBN releases 50,000 metric tons of maize from reserves. Um, of course, the PDP is still on that story. Th uh, threatens to challenge Zamfara government, a uh, governor rather, in court. 18 APC governors set to receive Matawale. Tuition fees hike. One student killed in Kaduna. Students go violent over colleagues' death in Abelkuta. Restructuring. Why we want to meet Ohaneze, Afenifere, and others, says the ACF. And also, PIB must address governance structure, future investment, SGF tells National Assembly. Uh, insurgency, army loses two soldiers, kills 12 uh, terrorists in Borno. Um, I think uh, finally we'll just share Song Wolu reappoints 12 out of 14 sacked Lasso governing council members. Those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Um, let's go to the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, Border Corruption. Security agents, smugglers, worsen subsidy crisis. Flout Buhari's order. The writers reads... Community leader says, blame security agents. We have 30 checkpoints along Katsina Jibea Road. Nigerian businessmen, security agents, smuggle patrol for Cameroonian rebels. And the army says, troops can't engage in such criminal activity. And customs said, smuggling done by residents. Diesel price jumps to 280 Naira. LCCI says inflation will rise. PDP threatens litigation as APC opens talks with three governors. Reps to summon FIRS, faults banks as $30 billion revenue probe begins. Senate tears apart NSITF management, alleges agency embezzles 84 billion naira. RMAFC plans review of revenue sharing formula and politicians pay. CBN plans price crash releases 50,000 metric tons of maize to crown Olam others. Also on the Punch newspaper, there's a picture and uh, it's of a building collapse or demolition. And the headline reads, Benue demolishes suspected kidnappers' buildings. Police arrest wife. Lawyers contest plea. Plea bargain as ex-jam registrar arraigned for 900 million Naira fraud. Matawale asked me to join him in APC. That's uh, according to the defecting ex-governor candidate. Robbers raid Oshun Christian Copper's Lodge in just six, steal 130,000 naira. Oshun mosque attack. Worshippers attempted unmasking our, our masquerader, says custodian. Fee hike protests. Casualties unknown as police clamp down on Kaduna students. Undo knocks PDP alleging negotiation on forthcoming South uh, Supreme Court's judgment. All right, and uh, let's move to the Nation newspapers next and see what stories we can find. Um, it says here, ethnic nationalities to push bill on restructuring and others. ACF's proposal gets Ohaneze, Pandef, Middle Belt Forum support. Afenifere, ARG, give conditions. 4.2 million Nigerians get COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, and, of course, uh, killers tied Super TV boss's hands with rope. Police trail conspirators. NNPC to acquire 20% stake in oil refineries. And also PDP fumes, uh, as, uh, fumes over another governor's defection to the APC. Buni to receive Matawale today. A few others, 900 million Naira fraud, ICPC to arraign ex-JAM registrar Ojerinde. And AUGF queries NI, NSITF. Those are the ones we can find on the nation this morning. 
And just uh, quickly on the Guardian newspaper, travelers ditch summer travel over multiple tests. 100% hike in airfares. Multiple PCR tests, quarantine restrictions frustrate holidaymakers. Foreign airlines jostle for Lagos Abuja market without promotional tickets. Blame weak Naira, rate of exchange, high operating costs, says Bennett. Experts explore tourism destinations within Nigeria and Africa. Stakeholders can vast railway reform as Abuja Kaduna train suffers another breakdown. Passengers stranded for hours. NRC apologizes. It's due to lack of maintenance, says stranded passengers. And federal government generates 918 million naira from rail in three months. Federal government embargoes travelers from Brazil, Turkey, India by one month. Your threat to shut down petrol stations empty, Nupeng Pengerson tells Ipman. Senate indicts NSITF management over 84 billion naira misappropriated in four years. Two soldiers, 12 terrorists killed as troops Iswap clash in Bornu state. Mr. Chris Owandu, good morning. Good morning once again. Okay, so the story about party politics in Zamfara State is a big one across the papers this morning. On the Daily Independent newspaper, um, it talks about defections and Sage's opinion here, saying APC is a highly unprincipled party and uh, saying that uh, PDP, governors are joining, PDP governors who are joining the APC are party opportunists. And on the PDP here, um, uh, or rather on the Nigerian Tribune, the PDP says are defecting governors lack courage and they go ahead to threaten uh, to challenge Zamfara governor in court asking him to either resign as governor saying he was elected as, as as governor on the platform of the PDP or stay in the party how do you come in with all the story about party politics and defections yeah um, I tend to argue prophet uh, on the on the reason or some of the grounds that the victim from BDP to APC, uh, you only the, uh, the kind of uh, politics we play in Nigeria, where people will give you a mandate and vote you in to appear a, a political party, and the next moment you are affecting and, and thinking uh, and uh, moving to another party, forgetting the fact that those who have voted for you didn't vote for the other party. If they wanted to vote for the other party, they would have done that. But um, that is the style of our politics here. And for me, um, I think it's high time we test um, this. I know that there have been some kind of um, situation called. I don't know what got enough to bring back. I think that's need uh, for any of the political parties to feel like big to test this to Supreme Court, let the Supreme Court make a pronouncement on whether a owner can just wake up one day and this will affect the party. Uh, without necessarily um, putting into cognizance the effort made by his political party to rally and to campaign and make sure that um, he, he won the election. At the end of it, you just dump the party uh, and more. It started with the uh, idea of a bonnet with the flip skills this he gave. Then the idea of um, processing now uh, having us down. And that Zambara is um, very tricky for me because uh, everybody knows the um, circumstance be uh, uh, how the prostate girl um, came into it. He didn't win the election. The election was more high PC, uh, 100%. But because of the technicalities, because the uh, PC didn't write put in, uh, in his commands uh, and selections, governorship, the courts on the right that leg on and um, he, I put um, uh, that tree on the law of the current law of the category. So uh, now he has done the PDP for the LBC. And to me, that is unfortunate. But that would play politics in Nigeria. No principle. Don't have mm -hmm. any. Uh, for me, it's the politics of LS, as we say it in local lands. Okay, but I, I want you to go on, you know, still um, on that topic. Do you think the PDP is right to want to sue uh, the governor um, and, of course, ask him to either resign or remain in the PDP? Do they, um, you know, have a, a point there? Yes, I said it earlier, and I said we're good for the PDP 
um, to go to us or any political party that feels agreed in uh, such session. Let us test the, the Supreme Court. Let the, the Supreme Court take a, make a fact, um, pronouncement of this. Based on that pronouncement, then if the Supreme Court finally make a pronouncement say this is wrong, and um, then so, so shall the so Supreme Court might that once you leave your particular defect that party, then you lose your the Supreme Court can come up with pronouncement looking at the various of our best law. The electoral act, the ninth constitution, as uh, Nigeria Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended, and all the relevant law, guiding election <laughs> and politicking in Nigeria, and the people to come with anything um, affirmative on that, then it will become a very, very vital um, uh, judgment for subsequent um, uh, politicians, governors, um, senators, House of Reps members, or even members of the state houses of assembly who just um, jump from one school party to the other. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know why the um, PDP governors are jumping ship. Um, then also that the PDP look at, we also look inward, ask itself, why is it that our government moving to other political parties? There must be something probably they're not getting right and they need to put their house to end as well. All right. Now, let's just talk about the story in Hunger. It says the CBN releases 50,000 metric tons of maize. Now, quickly share your thoughts on that one. You know, how effective will that be uh, with regards, um, you know, fixing the hunger problems in Nigeria? Well, I don't know how that is to solve the issue of hunger. Um, if it is, if maize as it's in meat, I don't know how it just eats uh, as a staple food. What nights eat regularly? They eat curry, they eat um, they eat rice, they eat wool, they eat ama, and um, yam. And um, the prices of these countries have skyrocketed in the past few months, even close to 100%. And Nigerians are crying. And, uh, and so the, 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 the prices of staple foods across board is on the right. So I wouldn't know why, what the government is trying to achieve uh, with uh, TB is going to achieve or the government is trying to achieve this upgrade. I don't know how that will, that will be able to part of Nigeria and uh, how that is going to be down the cost of, uh, of food items in the uh, UK. My take is that why we are having personal industry that one of the reasons we are having um, this skyrocketing prices of uh, food items is because the level of insecurity that is going on, especially in the North Central. We are uh, majority and not as well. We are most farmers, even the all, every part of Nigeria, we are farmers no longer to the farm because of fear of being killed, kidnapped, on being by the elders, bandits, by, um, by kidnappers and some of them. That brings us back to the of um, insecurity. Except we're able to start the, uh, the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. We'll continue to have issues. Where our economy will continue to be because people are finding it difficult to, able to meet their basic needs. Then also, you look at employment. What is the purchasing power of an average Nigerian? Most of them have been served. They don't have jobs. And they don't even, most the, before they are going to say, one zero one. Now, people, some people even have, people even go to zero 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 or zero zero one in day to eat. People don't, don't get to feed. So uh, I believe that uh, our government, which has a recent report that we've uh, uh, lost uh, about six million people have uh, gone back to poverty, if I'm right, for the report that we had. So the situation is not looking good, not looking better. But I think we can be able to do much in the area of insecurity so that we can be able to allow people to go back to farm and be able to produce adequate pay for for Nigerians. Okay, so on the Nigerian Tribune is a story about um, tuition fees hike and one student being killed in Kaduna. So their school fees had been increased from 25,000 naira to 75,000 naira. The students were unhappy about this. They had come out to protest. Police, you know, came out to clamp down on those protesters and ended up killing one. Uh, a Daily Trust newspaper is reporting to killed. Uh, but this is a story right now. Um, what's your take on it? It's rather unfortunate that we are in Kaduna. Uh, Kaduna is, is back news for the wrong reason. 
Um, but my, my worry is that this is coming from that. Now we are, I know that Governor of the State, Erupai, somebody that is very much interested in education, is well educated, is well read. He knows the value of education. And um, with situations in the country, I don't think that is necessary, necessary for there to be such increase in school fees. Um, parents are finding God to be able to make ends. Yes. In fact, education is one of the most subsidized sectors in Nigeria. So many uh, Nigerians as well can be able to uh, have their children educated. But from what we had, they increased the school fees. And the students have the right to come and protest. And if they do, I don't see any reason why the police or any security should go around shooting at them or um, dispersing them and whatever. The fact is that police are supposed to give them certain protection and make sure that um, the, the protest doesn't go out of control. But when you now decide that shooting and killing them just for protesting, and we have, uh, as you really said um, during your uh, opening, we have bandits who are going around claiming and saying that they kill soldiers, uh, they are killing security agents, nobody's doing anything about it, that they are being promoted all over the place and the securities are not doing it. They're just students that have to protest. But they are, protest is a fundamental rise of, of every Nigeria. And um, so um, that to me is a very dangerous trend. And uh, I think that that could be that the government should be issued to every people in Nigeria to support society. Um, education. That is the the, 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 the young generation, a well educated generation, uh, is of this value um, to the country. And it's done by all. Some even pay the most advanced degrees, they pay the students' costing. I don't see the rest of anything that has been used. It used to be part of it. I remember in my days, and um, I was in the uh, by my state uh, when I was in university. I attended the university. <laughs> the university was free for four years that I was in Lagos State University. I, I, I went to the university. I didn't pay my parents pay a couple. Um, so with my secondary school is, and during the Jacob uh, period, it was it was very was free from my class one class five then. I didn't, my parents didn't feel that, and see what we are, most of us are. So many people have got, had the opportunity, they have the, um, it didn't feel that it's, my parents could not pay. And it's so annoying, most of that's what was causing this have in this country today. We are most of the beneficiary of this education. So, okay. for me, uh, it is a no-no. All right, Mr. Wandu, I want us to still stay with the education sector. There's a story we've seen across the papers, and it's talking about how the ICPC, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, um, would arraign ex-JAM registrar Professor Dibu Ojerinde on July, um, July 6, and that's on alleged 600 million naira fraud. Now, they say he had misappropriated about 600, uh, I beg your pardon, about 900 million naira while 900. he headed, headed um, that uh, jam office. Uh, where do you come in regarding the story? He had sought a plea bargain, but that wasn't granted. Um, I, I wouldn't think that uh, the plea bargain is rejected. Probably he meets um, the demand uh, of um, the prosecution. And uh, it's, it's very, very sad issue. Um, because, as I said earlier, education is supposed to be one of the benefits of the younger generation. And JAM is a big key uh, factor in this guy, especially. You can't get to admission to university or your polytechnics uh, without going through them. And um, it's quite unfortunate that some of those that would in a position of responsibilities to take care of um, this institution are now the ones that are tipping their fingers in jail to school and um, steal money. And um, if, if, if it's fine, for the issue. All right. <clears throat> I think uh, we'll have to wrap up here. The um, sound and video quality wasn't very uh, good either, but uh, we'll say thank you to Mr. Chris Wandu for uh, joining us this morning. I think we'll have to pause it here um, and, of course, um, move on to uh, Today in History. Thanks very much once again to Chris Wandu for your time. Thank you. And thanks for speaking with us. We'll be back after the short break and telling you things that happened on this day many years ago.